It's on the same level as Cher, Rihanna, or RuPaul. So famous, so influential, so iconic that it only goes by one name, the pill. We all know that the pill is a hormone-based oral contraceptive, but do we all know exactly how it works as a birth control method? First, let's talk a bit about making a baby. When a mommy and daddy love each other very much. Oh wait, you're over the age of five? Great, let's get real then. The first step of pregnancy is ovulation, which is the point in every woman's menstrual cycle when one of her ovaries releases an egg. If a woman finds a lucky guy to have consensual condom with sex with, and one of his lucky sperms finds his way into one of her eggs, the fertilized egg will attach to the woman's uterus. And some 40 weeks of pregnancy later, congrats! She pops out a newborn person. Now, the pill works by stopping ovulation from even occurring in the first place. How? Basically, by making your body think that you're pregnant. See, once a woman becomes officially knocked up, her body ups the production of the hormones progesterone and estrogen. The uptick in these two hormones signals her body to stop producing gonadotropins, which are yet another type of hormone that specialize in facilitating ovulation. Think of it as a wild hormone party happening inside Club Female, the hottest club in a woman's body. Woo! In 1951, scientists were able to make the first progestin, which is a synthetic version of progesterone. And by synthesizing the hormone that's primarily responsible for blocking ovulation, they therefore invented a way to mass produce this for many women, leading to the birth of the birth control pill. Happy birthday to us. Although stopping ovulation is the pill's main job, the hormonal changes from the pill also thicken the cervical mucus, making it harder for sperm to pass through to reach an egg. It also makes it very unlikely that a fertilized egg can attach to the uterus. It's basically the woman's cervix saying to the sperm, you shall not pass. However, it's the 21st century, and this isn't Lord of the Pills with just one pill to rule them all. Scientists have continued to create different types of progestins, often combining them with estrogen, in the hopes of reducing or eliminating the negative side effects that the pill can sometimes cause, like blood clots. And estrogen, all pills must contain progestin, since that's the primary hormone needed to block ovulation. In fact, many women do better with the combo pill, which contains both progestin and estrogen. For some, the two hormones together are necessary to successfully block ovulation. But as most of us know, it can take a bit of a trial and error to figure out which type of birth control works best for you. Plus, you don't even need to be tied down to oral contraception. Vaginal rings and patches also achieve the same effect for some women. You might still be wondering why women still even get their period when they're on the pill, since they aren't experiencing natural ovulation. And the truth is, the periods aren't the same. It's kind of weird. In a normal instance, when a woman ovulates but the egg doesn't get fertilized, her hormone levels drop significantly, signaling her body to menstruate and shed the uterine lining, aka they holler at Aunt Flo and her red caravan to roll on into Tampon Town. But when you're on birth control, the ovulation preventing hormones are only being released for three weeks out of the month. That fourth week is simply seven days of placebos with absolutely no progestion, which kind of tricks your body into believing that you had ovulated and the egg wasn't fertilized. And yada, yada, yada. Grab your tampons and pads because your period is here now. What's weird is that while the pill prevents ovulation, it doesn't completely prevent the uterine lining from building up during your cycle. So your birth control period is sometimes called withdrawal bleeding, which somehow sounds way more intense than menstruation. But the good news is that periods on the pill tend to be lighter, specifically because the lining doesn't thicken nearly as much. You take the good with the bad, you know? To be effective, your contraceptive hormones have to be ingested every day, ideally at the same time of the day. As long as you're using it correctly, the pill is estimated to be over 99% effective at making sure you don't get pregnant. Of course, the X factor of human error does bring that percentage down a bit, but at the end of the day, we should still be grateful because the pill is truly a feat of medical engineering. Jedi mind tricking your body into thinking you're already pregnant. No wonder it's so iconic. The real challenge is mind tricking yourself into remembering to take it.